right, lads and lasses, welcome to another episode of the Two Nutter Podcast, the Southern Hemisphere's number one podcast for all things Newcastle United. We uh, have the rare pleasure, I think we can call it a rare pleasure, of discussing a win for Newcastle United. Look at all the smiling faces from the lads here. Um, Newcastle win 2-1 at St. James's, St. James's Park. Uh, which was this morning for us. It was a 2.30 on the eastern side of Australia kickoff for us, 3.30 for Bobby down there. Uh, before going any further, if you are watching this on YouTube, please give us a like, and uh, that really helps us spread the word to other channels. Um, so before we get into this fantastic win, uh, let's have some quick hellos from Bobby, who's down in Ballarat. But first, Jack, who is somehow still awake. Um, you've had a long day, Jack. How are you going, mate? I'm very good. I've had a bit of a second wind. I'm feeling good. Um, it has been a long day, though, yeah. It was, I think, 2 o'clock my alarm went off. Um, and then, yeah, the game was a 2.30 kickoff here in the proper part of Australia. And then I, managed, I, I think I got maybe an extra an, an hour after that before my toddler came in and wanted to get into bed. So, yeah, it's been a long day. But as, as always is the case when Newcastle win, yeah, it's, it's been a good day. Uh, I wasn't looking forward to going to work when when they scored their goal. I was just I was thinking about calling in sick to be honest. But uh, nah, yeah, here I am. Here we are. We've had a win, so it's been a really good day. Positive. Yeah, and you even managed to squeeze in a, a run this morning as well. I don't know how you're doing, mate. Um, <laughs> and also, as I say, Bobby down in Ballarat, who himself is looking a little bit fingered. How are you going, Bobby, mate? Yeah, fingered. I wish I was getting fingered. Um, no, the um, <laughs> the, the mouth is smiling, right. but the eyes are about to. <laughs> the, the eyes are about to shut close. I think it's been a long. It's like I've been up for two days, to be honest. But um, so, as Jack says, it's always good when Newcastle win. You get through it. You push through it. It's public holiday Absolutely. down there. What are you complaining about? Oh yeah, no nah, public holiday. It's fantastic. I didn't have to go to work, but um, which was a good thing. But uh, I think I've had uh, forty-five minutes sleep, so that hurts. And I had to drive um, to see the in-laws, so. It's been a big day. Anyway, we'll crack on. Well, at least you had the win to keep it going. I don't think I want to know any more about why you want to get fingered. Uh, we'll just leave that one <laughs> where it is. Maybe it's an Australian thing. I don't know. Don't want to know. Um, <laughs> Keegan, uh, that's, that's Keegan. Keegan, I know. That's where I got that phrase from. Uh, all right. So this was Newcastle at home against Wolves. Uh, Newcastle looking for their first win in six across all competitions. Uh, Wolves manager Nunian Lopetegui, I'm sure that isn't correct. Is that right? That's probably not right. That's right. Said that's that as new... good as it's going to get. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, setting the bar there. Um, he said that Newcastle is one of the best in the league and uh, we are the kind of teams that they want to be able to compete with, which was a nice little pat on the back for the tune. And Shearer said that um, when he was talking about Wilson, he said that he hasn't been quite the same since the World Cup. He hasn't been playing well. And uh, when we look at the teams, which I'll bring up now, he said he wasn't surprised that a certain someone up front had started. So I'll just read through these uh, th- through these uh, lineups. First of all, Newcastle, it was Nick Pope. Poopy. Then it was Trips, Shaw, Botman and Dan Byrne. Then it was Bruno, Sean, uh, Joe Willock, Jacob Murphy, Alan Saint-Maximin and Alexander Isaac, the aforementioned forward. Um, come to you first, Jack. There was a little bit of a discussion about what Eddie Howe might do in this lineup. Uh, there's been lots and lots of calls from fans and probably pundits alike that we needed to freshen things up. Uh, one or two surprises in that lineup, I think. Uh, what did you make of it? I think that was pretty much as I expected. I thought maybe Gordon might play instead of Murphy. Uh, I did have mm. a feeling he was going to give Miggy a rest. I think he's needed a rest for a little while. Um, the big one was Isak coming in, I think. Everybody's wanted that for quite a long time. He, he has started a couple of the games. Um, he started against Bournemouth and Liverpool, but they were kind of difficult games. Uh, this was a, a different matter. So it was really good to see him back in. Wilson hasn't even been training, so I don't know what's going on with Wilson, but he was on the bench. Um, it was five changes from the last game, but it kind of didn't feel like that because, I mean, the defence and goalkeeper are still very familiar. The midfield was basically what we've got without Joe Linton. Um, Murphy was a bit of a surprise, but like I've keep b- been banging on about for ages, the team does well when he plays. So um, it was a bit of a surprise, but the, you didn't get the kind of um, uproar that you got before the last game about the team selection. And I think mainly it was because Isak was playing instead of Wilson, which was really good. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bobby, um, 
I'm not sure who you might have predicted for this lineup, but were you happy with that lineup? Um, I suppose the obvious kind of position that you might think, well, that's a little bit weak, is the Jacob Murphy position. Would you agree? Yeah, look, I'm a bit like Jack. I think I haven't been as downcast on Murphy as as most have. He's done well when he's come in, but I think Gordon being out sealed that because I think we needed to freshen up up top and I, I think I might be much happier with that team than I have been in recent weeks. And I think Jack's right. It's because I've seen Alexander Izak up top because for me, Wilson hasn't deserved to start. Um, so it was good to see that change. I was a bit surprised that uh, Eddie left Dan Byrne um, at left back to to man on Traore and the pace that Wolves present sometimes. I thought Target would come back in, but um, that was it to me. I think, you know, it, otherwise it was a pretty good lineup. And I agreed with Elmer on getting uh, a deserved rest. Yeah, yeah. He does so much running, doesn't he? Yeah. Um... Mm. It's nice to see. It's nice to be able to do that, and then also have those options on the bench for later on. And that's kind of what Eddie Howe uh, used later in the game. Um, let's have a look at Wolves. Uh, it was Saar and Goal. Uh, Sem- oh God, I'm going to do it again. Semedo, Semedo. That can't be right. Dawson, Kilman, Johnny, Lemina, Lemina, uh, Neves, Martino, uh, Adama Troy, as you just mentioned there, Jimenez, and Podens. Um, I'll stick with you, Bobby. Any surprises in that lineup? We're not obviously Wolves experts, but um, I think there was a was there a hint that Nevers might be uh, rested for this particular game, given they have a bunch of big ones coming up after this one. Yeah, I did read somewhere that there was a, a doubt on him, and that would have been nice for us because he's a fantastic player. Um, like us, they they changed their front lineup a little bit um, from the uh, midweek game or the the game before. Um, Potence, I don't really know much about who's featured there on the cover of a magazine, which looks like it. Um, but, yeah, I think they've got a very good team. You know, Lamina came in, adding to Neves and Matinho, and I thought that's where they could, you know, win the battle or break even with us. Um, and I worried about our uh, ability to score, but um, that's a pretty handy team on paper, though. Yeah, um, as we'll get into, I think we kind of managed that midfield pretty well. Um I don't know if it's just me, but uh, Jack Triori, I'm, I'm always actually quite happy to see him play against us because he's got that. He's half baby oil, half brick shit house. Um, <laughs> but he's he's also half, I'm not very good at maths, uh, Shola. He's got that Shola yeah. in for me. Um, so I was quite happy to see him start. Um, any other kind of standouts in that team for you, Jack? I think Podent is a good player. So he's, a, and I think he played really well. He's one of their generic Portuguese players that they've got. Like they seem to sign every summer they seem to sign these Portuguese players for like 30 million that are really good in the Portuguese league and some of them turn out good like Jota did. Um but some of them don't seem to do anything. Um Nunes was the big one they signed in the summer and he's he was on the bench. Um but uh yeah Traore is just a bit like I was worried about his pace against Dan Byrne but hmm. when you actually look at him I don't think he can play football. <laughs> he he kicks the ball and he can run fast, but I don't actually think he's actually very good at playing football. Oh, and he, he was hooked at half time, so I provide a Keganism. He's he's all bark and no bite. Yeah. Yeah, all fart and new shite is what we'd say in the northeast. <laughs> um but yeah, all right. So let's move on to the game then. Um I think I think I would summarize the first twenty minutes as being a bit of a back and forth. Um first five minutes, mostly wolves. Sort of next 10 minutes, mostly Newcastle. Uh, last five minutes started to turn a little bit again towards Wolves. Uh, but I would say in on the whole, it was mostly in Newcastle's favour. But we didn't have to wait very long for the first incident, did we? And, uh, oh, there's going to be a lot of talking about this one. It was when uh, a ball is passed back to Nick Pope from the wing by Botman and looked fairly innocuous. It was passed to him somewhat outside of his um, box. Uh, and Nick Pope, who I think I'm starting to have doubts about his feet, he sort of plays it inside to get inside his area, um, seemingly slightly unaware that there's a, a Wolves player bearing down on top of him. I think it was um, it was a Jimenez yeah. who's bearing down on top of him. Uh, so Pope takes a touch. It's a little bit heavy because I don't think he's realised that there's a guy just not that far away from him. So he uh, he's sort of turning. He's like, oh, shit, there's a guy on top of us. The Jimenez... Um, 
gets a touch of the ball and then he goes to ground. And um, Pope looks a little bit sheepish. Let's be honest, he's sort of turned around going, ah, oh, Christ, I've done it again. Um, VAR decides there was nothing wrong with this particular incident. I'm going to come to you first on this, Jack, because I know you've got a different opinion. Um, and I would say about VAR, it's one of those rare occasions where it's such a big call and they got the, and the, and they decided to move on really fast. Like for us, mm -hmm. we've said it before on this thing that this anything to do with us, it seems to sort of take forever. So that's usually when it's us looking to benefit from it. In this case, they were like, yeah, that's fine, in the space of 30 seconds or something. Um, and play continues, but it was talked about at length. So, Jack, give us mm. your opinion on what you saw here. Well, first of all, for the second home game in a row, <laughs> Nick Pope is a bomb scare. I don't know what's going on, on with him, but he seems to, he's definitely not, that's not the strongest part of his game with his feet. Uh, he had a bad touch and it bobbled away. I just think this is a penalty. I really do. Like, I, I, I think Jimenez is looking for it. He could have probably stayed on his feet and maybe he could have put it into the goal. But if you do that and if it, if it bobbles away and if there's contact and if the player goes down, I just think if this was at the other end, we're screaming for a penalty here. And th we would use this as an example of how Vaz fucked us over again if we didn't get this. So I can I can understand why it wasn't given because he did look for it but for me that's still it's still a foul and I, I'm I really think we've got we've got a way lucky with this one um yeah like I said you'd be screaming for that at the other end so it's probably like a 80% penalty 20% not penalty in my opinion um and if VAR if the ref had given this it wouldn't have been overturned to to not be a penalty I think yeah I think that's a fair point and a fair distinction to make on this one as well um Bobby, I saw you nodding your head a little bit there. Um, I, I guess you're going to agree with Jack on this one? No, not necessarily, but I can see why people think it's a penalty. And if it was given, um, I you know, I wouldn't have been too upset in terms of... I was more upset at Pope in real time. Like When it happened, I couldn't believe he's done it again. And I couldn't yeah. understand why he didn't just kick it with his left foot and why he had to bring it back towards goal. And it's just a simple, you never do that as a goalkeeper, like go across the goal. Like it's just stupidity. But when I watched it in slow motion, which obviously the ref didn't have the advantage of doing, it's all Raul who's gone into him and shoulder barge Pope and then taken a dive. Pope's actually tried to avoid his arm in making contact. So I think that's what VAR saw too. But... Like Jack says, if the ref had given it, which in real time it looked a dead cert penalty, we wouldn't have had this VAR overturned and we couldn't complain because, you know, what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah, some good points there. I mean, why he doesn't just move it to his left instead of his right? Uh, why move it towards goal? I, I appreciate he's not aware that there's a guy bearing down on them. I'm not sure there was a call from the crowd, evidently not from his uh, teammates either. Um, but the obvious thing would have been to not even take that risk, surely, if you're not aware of your surroundings. Um, I, I do kind of tend to think, personally, that, um, uh, what was it, who was it, Jimenez has, has, he's touched the ball, you can see Pope's coming, you can kind of make out that in the first little slide here, at the top of it, and he kind of jumps and then sticks his ass <laughs> into, into Pope's midriff as Pope is, I think, trying to run behind him to, in order yeah. to circle around and try and get back into goal, and he goes down like a, a sack of crap. Um, it's interesting that was there any call, do you think, Jack Favard, to pull the referee across to the line? Or do you think they've just looked at that and went, this guy's literally kind of moved into the way of Pope? Well, it happened really quickly. So um, it, I don't think, yeah, the ref obviously didn't get called over to have a look at it. So the the VAR official is trying to make a quick decision maybe to get the game going again. It's a good job Pope didn't go with his leg there because if he had, <laughs> it definitely would have been a penalty. But Jimenez has not scored a goal in 20 games or something, I think it was. So you can see if he was a bit more confident, maybe he would have tried to stay on his feet and just put it into an empty net. But then he's South American, so he probably wouldn't have done that anyway. He probably <laughs> always would have like been likely to go down. But yeah, I think it was yeah. a big lucky... I think it was a, a lucky escape for us. But having said that, yeah, like I've, I've watched this and you, you, there's the angle from the side where you can see he does kind of jump in, jump into him. So yeah, I can I but can the, understand why it wasn't. But, but the ref at real time wouldn't have seen that as that. I can't believe mm. the ref on the pitch didn't get pointed the spot straight away. Like I just, 
it looked a dead set penalty. It looked like a player that's made a mistake and tried to recover, being yeah. brush about it because he's he's fucked up. But for whatever reason, he didn't give it. Maybe he did see Jimenez go into Pope or whatever, but fair play because if he did give a penalty, then we'd be um, probably talking the different mode today. Yeah, and I think that was Jimmy Carragher's point, wasn't it? He, he made the point that the ref was nowhere near it to, to be able to make that call and um, he should have been called across by VR to the touchline to take a look. Um, Shearer was on the side of you, Jack. He thought that should have been a penalty. Uh, Wrightley was on the other side. He thought it was more Jimenez uh, instigating that contact in, in, in order to look yeah. for the um, the foul. For what it's worth, Howard agrees, agrees with me and Bobby. He says he didn't think it was a penalty. So uh, <laughs> that's the end that's of that. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, but it would have been a red card as well. I and mean, Pope would have been banned for four games. So it's it's a good job. <laughs> it's a good job. Yeah, what, whatever the outcome, whatever the outcome, we've got to. Is Pope out of form? Is he is he shell shocked? We've got to find out what's going on because the two last decisions by him to to do these rash things is just extraordinary and um yeah it's something that we've got to keep our eye on i think he did do the same thing right. later as well where it kind of bottled off him and he got away with mm, it that did. time but then he yeah. made he did make some good some good saves as well which is what he's good at you know he's got that huge yeah, core of his that he gets to that he so he makes he made some good saves but yeah he's definitely a little bit jittery at the moment yeah, absolutely. And um, that incident, actually, I want to I want to point out that this actually came uh, straight after a really nice move down our left that fed Dan Byrne. Dan Byrne kind of kept his run going and the ball was fed to him. Uh, and he, he went into the box and then uh, he rode one challenge, if I remember rightly, and then the ball sort of went away from him a little bit and he had to use his massive long legs to sort of slide and hook back into the middle of the pitch. Uh, but he actually made contact with uh, Neves as well. So he was down sort of holding his legs or whatever, Byrne gets up, he's like, eh, get up, you dickhead. And then as we're, as he's doing that, the, the movers went up to the other side of the pitch. Um, I do wonder if Botman should have maybe given a call to Pope. Um, maybe Pope just needs a bit more help from the crowd or from these players. Uh, we know he's not that great with his feet. Um, so I think, was, was it rightly? I think he said that, you know, you need if, if you know he's not very good with his feet, play him the different kind of ball. Don't put him in these situations where he might balls it up. But I think in this situation, he just had to touch it to his left or put his foot through it and it wouldn't have been anywhere near this kind of um, penalty sort of call, you know. But as it was, that was nil-nil as well. So that was a real important point of the game uh, because just six minutes later, um, good old big dog, there he is, leaping like a salmon. Um, he gets on the end of a, a fantastic, an absolutely fantastic free kick from who else? Trips down the right-hand side. It was Inch perfect, went right into the middle. It was a crowded box, as you can imagine, but uh, Isaac somehow managed to find the space to jump. I think it might have been a suggestion of a little push, I'm not sure. And he kind of does that sort of glance that you do to just help the ball along into the bottom corner. Uh, the keeper's getting absolutely anywhere. Um, and Christ, Isaac really did enjoy that afterwards. He starts peeling away, screaming away to the crowd. Um, Bobby, first I'll come to you. Um, Given that we'd just gotten away possibly with that potential red card to Pope, um, how important was it to get this goal straight afterwards? Uh, you know, maybe it's to avoid any feeling of wolves being hard done to and rallying on the back of that. Um, and, and how good was that free kick, man? Is what you come to expect from Trippier, like he's just a, an amazing free kick, um, crosser into the box anytime. He's, he's one of the best we've ever had, I think. Um, in terms of scoring, it's always good to score first, but especially when you probably should be 1-0 down um, and a keeper sent off. So it felt really good to score and um, it was good to see Isaac do that kind of goal as well, not his Maisie runs and, you know, solo finishes. It was something, you know, Shearer-esque, really, um, to get his head on the ball. And he's such a big lad at six foot three, but I didn't think he had this in his, you know, in his box. So to do that, the header was great as well. So yeah, it felt really good at that moment and thought we got away with murder at the time, but I thought we were the better team in the first half and probably deserved to go one nil up. Yeah. Well, Jack, just speaking of the fact that we got away with murder there, um, <laughs> there was a replay pool. Wolves. There was a replay later on uh, super slow motion, one of those types where there's a particular angle and you can see that uh, the free kick that trips takes that uh, mm -hmm. kick from, 
the challenge, it looks very much like Wolves got the ball and Trips went down under, I guess, the follow through. Uh, and there was a potential case there for Wolves to be in hard done by uh, in that incident, right on the back of having also not got Nick Pope sent off for that previous incident. Uh, but putting that all to one side, how good was the delivery? How good was the finish? And um, you'd have to say that was the perfect person to score the first goal, wouldn't you? Yeah, Trippier's delivery is back. He was back to his best yesterday. Obviously, he had the mistake, which we're going to talk about, I'm sure. But his delivery was really good again. His set pieces were good. This was just a quality cross. And like Bobby said, we, we were kind of told when Isak signed that he's six foot three, but he's not very good at scoring headers. <laughs> mm. This this reminded me of and the header that Andy Carroll scored in Euro 2012, I think it was, when Beckham crossed it. And he's, he just got his neck muscles so powerful into the bottom corner. And it was just a bit of a release, this goal, because we've needed to score a goal. Like it, We've been desperate for, to score a goal. And this game was having a bit of a similar pattern where we were creating chances and we were having corners and we just weren't getting the shots away. And it was it was looking like it might be one of those days again. But Isak was absolutely electric from the beginning. He was all over the place. He was closing down. He was getting the ball. So I think if anyone was going to score, it was going to be him. And it was just a real moment of relief uh, obviously there was still a long way to go in the game at this point but to score a goal of that quality and it's such an important game and sometimes you need like we talked about the, the Fulham game earlier in the season where we had that look and they had someone sent off and even in the Fulham home game where Mitrovic missed that pen you just need a bit of luck in these games sometimes we, we, mm. we needed to win this game we needed to score goals and what happened with Pope was maybe that bit of luck we needed and then that can give you a little bit of a boost and we can go from there. So it was just a really fantastic goal, really good way to to, to kind of head into towards the half-time break and we probably could have had a few more even even after this really, uh, but it was fantastic, lovely goal. Yeah, absolutely. And I still maintain that Mitrovic missed that penalty on purpose. I won't be here. I won't, I won't be totally Mitrov. different. <laughs> <laughs> he could not score against his beloved tune. Um, yeah, so that gets the whole team firing. It, this is only 26 minutes, but the crowd's up for it. The team's up for it. In the space of a couple of minutes, Isaac is again down the left-hand wing and loads of space running the channels. He receives like quite a long ball down the line, but he gets it. He moves into the box. Um, in the first instance, he tries to feel Willick, uh, feed Willock in the middle, but it kind of just passes him by. And then it ping balls around a little bit, and Willock, I think it is, who finally gets the ball away and uh, as a shot, but it's deflected off for a corner. And then the second time, uh, Isaac again down the wing, and he takes a shot this time, but it's blocked. And it's just Newcastle. All over Wolves right now. Um, half hour gone. The Wolves are pinned right back. We're making passes. We're making moves. We're doing all these lovely little uh, triangles, um, getting in shots here and there. And for me, it just really felt like the pre-World Cup Newcastle, the kind of Newcastle that we haven't seen a great deal this year. And it was lovely to just see them all pumping, the crowds getting everyone going. 35 minutes, Bruno heads off the crossbar. Um, it was a long corner. Um, they found Burn at the back post who kind of cuts it back. And somehow, uh, Jack, Bruno manages to hit it off the post. Uh, we don't have to dwell too long on this one, but um, mm. was that easier to score? <laughs> uh, it was kind of rising when he got his head on it, So, but he should have scored. It was like a free header four yards out or something, so he definitely should have scored. Um, yeah, but we're, it, it was starting to feel like like we've done this a few times where we've scored a goal and we've really got done well after that and had a lot of energy, but then we haven't got that second goal. It probably would have been game over if we'd have scored in that period of time. Yeah, and um, we just couldn't do it. Um, and then the second, you know, the second half happened and it was a different game. But Ish Bruno should have scored, but there was kind of a penalty shout after that as well, which wasn't talked about at the time, but. Lamina, I think, handballed it after that handballed, and it went out for yeah. a corner. Yeah. But that yeah. so that was like a half a half shot that could have been given. Um, but yeah, we we should have scored it again in that period of time and it would have been put the game to bed before half time. Well, it would have been typical Newcastle to not do that and then end up ballsing it up in the second half, but fortunately it didn't come to that in the end. <laughs> uh Bobby, just quickly from your point of view, Bruno, a bit shit, wasn't he? A bit shit all game, didn't score that goal from an absolute sitter uh off the crossbar. Uh, he's totally rubbish. Um, should have scored it. Um, and yeah, did you see anything about the handball? I did. I, I heard it mentioned, but I didn't even see it myself. So, did you see anything in that? Uh, yeah, it was. Look, 
I don't know with the handball law anymore. I don't know what's a handball, what's not a handball. I just don't know. It probably by the letter of the law it was there, but if the ref sees it, but he obviously didn't or ignored it and and it was enough for VAR to say, yep, that's a handball. So I'm happy to let that one slide. Um, on Bruno, it was a shit moment. Definitely, I think he should have scored, but <laughs> um, it wasn't his best game, to be fair. Like, I thought he was in it in a lot, but he, you know, wasn't as influential as he has been. But I think there was lucky there was another midfielder that was incredible, to be honest, um, that picked up his slack. So, but yeah, I think, as Jack said, oh, we should have been two, three nil up. But this is our, this has been our issue. This has been like putting the ball in the back of the net is our biggest Achilles heel and something in the summer that we have to uh, get better at. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and um, it was almost just Newcastle all over, wasn't it? Because just before the, the halftime goals, about 38 minutes thereabouts, um, Wolves almost actually get the equaliser. Coming back to what Jack was saying there, we needed to score and didn't. Um, Chips, he um, he probably should have shown Podens, Podens, Podence, I don't know what you call him. Down the left, he tried to, but Podence actually managed to cut inside, inside to the pitch, and he gets a shot away, and it's off the post. Um, just very quickly, Jack, was that going in, or did Pope have it covered? I think Pope probably would have had that covered, but it was a bit of a, a warning shot for us as well that Wolves were, Wolves are quite handy uh, on the on the, the transition you have to say these days on the counter attack. They were quite good, <laughs> and he had a good shot that hit off the post. But um, yeah, it was it was a little bit of a, a kind of a, a flag that Wolves were still in the game, uh, even though we were at this point we were absolutely all over them. Yeah, truth be told, if you're going to go in with a little warning before half time, um, it's not a bad thing. Kind of Eddie yeah. Howe can point to it and say, "Look at what nearly happened there, lads. Get your shit together." Um, the half time whistle comes. I just want to point out this young lad down on the line, the ball boy. Uh, <laughs> don't know what his name is, but uh, he had. One of the more sensational first touches I think I've ever seen <laughs> at St. James's Park. Uh, it was high, it was long, and he just brings it down with a, with a single touch, and then he just sits down all kind of like, yeah, whatever, with his face like that. He's like, oh, I'll do that all the time. Um, <laughs> if, if, that kid, if, that that our, if that kid's not in our academy, something's wrong. <laughs> I was about to say, in one of the common threads on Twitter, someone's, a few people said that he actually is in our academy. So um, it was just a sensational touch. Look out for him next season <laughs> uh, you, you never know you never know uh, depends how bad our depth gets um <laughs> yeah so second so first half passes by it, it was i don't have any stats for this um because i couldn't find any but i did hear some stats just before half time went uh, we had about six corners to their zero possibly one i'm not sure uh 10 shots with three on target to their two and one i think it was in the end um so just by them stats we were doing pretty well so Second half, and you kind of wonder what kind of sort of Newcastle you're going to see in the second half. Um, we've been all over Wolves quite a lot, um, but you know, coming back again to what Jack said, we didn't get that second goal just when we are on the ascendancy, and Wolves give us a little warning, and you sort of think, oh God, I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Um, and also, there was a little bit of a suspicion about the fitness of ASM. I'm not sure if he took a knock. I think he might have took a knock before half time. Um, and he looked a little bit gingerly in the second half. Um, Isaac didn't know. He was absolutely flying. Um, but as you mentioned a little bit earlier, Jack, 50 minutes or so, Pope is caught on his feet again. Uh, it's Jimenez closing him down. And I think Pope, um, he just hesitates, doesn't he? He just mm -hmm. kind of hesitates a little bit when he could have kicked the ball. And next thing you know, uh, Jimenez is actually taken off his toes on this occasion. I think he just gets a heavy touch and he rolls out the back. But it kind of just comes back to what we were saying about Nick Pope. Is he is he lacking a little bit of confidence? Is he just is his mind somewhere else? I've, I've no idea where it could be. Um, or is it just that he's so bad with his feet that we need to keep it away from his feet? What what, what do we need to do with Nick Pope here? It's only I think it's only really been the last sort of couple of games where this has been a major problem. So I think it's just a little bit of a blip for him. Uh, he's still miles better than Dubravka and Karius, so he's going to keep the jersey, and so he should because he's a good shot stopper and he's a good he's good distribution as well. Uh, his feet's not as the be the best part of his game, but like Bobby said, I think it was Bobby that said, "Don't give him the ball in that position." Then, or what Ian, Ian Wright said, "Don't give him the ball in that in that position, or try and make it a bit a bit easier for him, or give him a, give him an angle to pass straight away." 
Um, but I don't think it's kind of a major problem. You know, he's still keeping um, keeping clean sheets lately, but he's still one of the best goalkeepers in the league, really. So, yeah, he'll, he's got full support, and I'm sure he'll cut these mistakes out soon. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's only a few minutes later. Um, Bruno sticks a leg out, gives away uh, probably a silly free kick, really, uh, outside our area, and give props to Nick Pope because Wolves take a free kick and uh, he pulls out an excellent save. I think this might have been one where it was going in the top corner. May not have been going in, but still he had to be he had to be well alert because I think Wolves played a little trick on the free kick and he weren't sure who was going to take it and they changed the angles. And uh, it was a, it was a brilliant free kick save from Nick Pope. We kind of go up the other end and do the same sort of thing. Pull out a save from Saar. Um, and, and again, straight after that, Nick Pope with another great save. This one I think was probably the best of the game. Bobby, it's where it's... Um, if I remember rightly, it's coming down his right and it's kicked low and it's kicked hard and he gets down very quick and makes a save with his hand, I think. Um, so as much as we are saying that there's something wrong with his feet, he still, uh, he still as Bobby, uh, as Jack says, uh, an excellent, excellent shop stop and keeper, isn't he? One of the best in the league, no doubt. Um, and that, yeah, you're right. That was probably the save of the game from him because it's, it's harder to do. It's hard to get down um, in that angle rather than, when it's sort of a nice height to jump and, and leap at. Um, but yeah, he's an incredible shot stopper. He was, he was okay with his, the ball at his feet in before the world cup. And, but something like he's confident might've been rattled and maybe that Liverpool game rattled him a little bit, but hopefully as Jack mm. said, it's just a little blip. But um, when it comes to shot stopping, I'm always confident that he will get a hand to the ball, you know, in most cases in this season, we've had hardly many goals scored against us. So, you know, the confidence is right to be with him in goals. As long as he gets a hand of the ball inside the box. He should just stay <laughs> inside the fucking box. Don't ever leave the box. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Because our first penalty call, he was outside the box, wasn't he? Yeah, mm. absolutely. Stay in the box, Nick Pub. I think we've cracked it, lads. That's what he needs to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, about five minutes later, we looked like we are going to make some changes. There was a little bit of drama in the Melbourne and sort of delayed things a little bit. Hopefully, whoever that was are fine. Um, but we make a change. It's Isaac. He goes off for Wilson. And ASM, he goes off for... Uh, oh, God, I forgot who he goes off for. Who's he go for? ASM uh, goes Miggy. off for... Miggy, I think. Miggy. Miggy. Of course, it is Miggy, yeah. And at the same time, Wolves make a triple change, and one of those people is Huang He Chan. I'm only mentioning that because... In the space of five seconds, I'll be talking about him again. But before we get to that point, um, Jack, uh, Isaac going off for Wilson, how did you rate Isaac's game up to that point? Um, and do you think it was right to take him off at that point? I think his first half was like a real outstanding, memorable performance. That was like, he was good in his debut against Liverpool, but that was like, oh, you know, yeah. he was he's introducing himself there to St. James's Park, to, to the, the local public. He was brilliant. He was electric. That's what we thought we were going to get when we signed him. And that's what £63 million buys you. He's, he's a real top quality striker. He's he, he's in that bracket, probably behind Haaland and Mbappe. Uh, that's what, you know, that's what people were saying when we signed him. He's in that kind of Nunes kind of bracket. Um, same same level. He's only 23. He's he's fantastic. Just look, look at his... Scary. Look at his assists and his goal contributions already this season. So mm. he was he was brilliant. We haven't seen enough of him as we wanted to this season because he had that thigh injury, which he got on international duty. And then he, he aggravated that as well. So I think the reason he came off was just because of fitness, because he'd he'd ran himself into the ground. Um he wouldn't have come off if he wasn't um if he wasn't tired, I don't think. Um and Eddie's managed him very, very carefully. He's, he doesn't want him to break down again. Um he did say previously that he hadn't been fit to play 90 minutes um, but then he kind of clarified that he said the reason is because of the the high intensity game that we play and um, so I can understand why he came off at the time it, it was a bit of a shame for us because he was playing so well and um, because Wilson hasn't been in very good form um, but Maxi kind of was hobbling around straight after half time as well he seems to do that every game he picks up a knock and um, him and Isaac linked up quite well but I think it was probably about the time of the game where we needed to kind of try and get a bit of the impetus back as well because Wolves were the better team in the second half and had a lot of possession. Um, that's mm. a bit of a problem for us when really Bruno is our only midfielder who can pass and who can pass well and who can retain the ball. 
So that was a bit of a problem in the second half. Um, but I think the changes at that time were probably about right, um, even though obviously it would have been better for Isak to have stayed on if he was able to. And Bobby, um, would you agree that it was a good call to take off Isak, especially given that there is another game coming up in about four days' time, away to Forest? Um, so you want to you want to make sure that he's fresh for that as well. And what did you make of ASM's contribution today? Um, on Isak, yeah, we've got to manage our squad. It's a small squad um, in terms of players that can play at the quality that we want to play at. Um, it was interesting. Interesting how rectified his comments a little bit um, or justified his comments earlier in the week at his press conference saying that um, Isaac wasn't fit enough to play 90 minutes, but it was in our system, which I think we've been banging a lot on this season about we play a different style and the intensity is so great that a lot of players won't suit our style of play. And um, obviously Isaac's getting up to that standard of fitness. He hasn't had that before. So, yeah, probably the right call. Um wasn't confident with the way the game was moving um, with Wilson coming on um, that <laughs> we'd be able to score another if Wolves scored. So what we're going to talk about in about five seconds, I was pretty <laughs> thinking that my prediction was going to be right um, of one all. But um, Miggy coming on was good as well, just to give that energy boost and that buzzing around and, yeah, on that. And I think it was a good change because ASM was sort of struggling. There's something... <sighs> His body doesn't seem right at the moment, ASM. He, he seems a bit mm. slower. I don't know whether he's trying to conform to... He's changing his game to fit in with the standards we have and to pass more and not take on men more and be all about him, or he's just carrying a little bit more and struggling to get past defenders or whatever it is. But I didn't see anything in his game that I was really confident about, and I don't think he'll be here next season. That's my personal point of view. Big call, big call. I've seen a few comments online from some people giving their opinion. Um, yeah, one of them was, is he trying really hard to change his game to fit into Eddie Howe's system? Which I have to say is nice to see. He was always mm. talked about as this problematic player. But if he's seeing that Newcastle at the top end of the table and he's seeing where the project's going and he wants to be involved and he wants to improve himself in our system, then I'm actually quite happy to see him try that as long as he can actually do it in the end. Um the other thing is that he's had injuries to his hamstrings, someone said. So uh, the suggestion there was that perhaps he's a little bit mindful. It's back in his back of his head. He's, uh, as, you can, as you can imagine, players would be. It's sort of you know playing on his mind. He doesn't want to do too much, doesn't want to go too fast. That burst of pace doesn't seem to be with him right now, where you just kind of skin someone in the first few touches. Um, but yeah, we'll see how he goes on for the rest of the season. It's good to have him even as an option off the bench. Um, sometimes that might be the best option as well. But moving on, because... In the space of about two seconds after that uh, bunch of changes from both teams, it is uh, Huang He Chan who Keeps probably couldn't believe his luck. Yeah, well, he he um he just runs straight out of the defence in many ways, and the defence is kind of doing the best, but the ball's bobbling around right in the middle of the box. Um, I think there was a there was a. The ball comes loose and it goes down the wing to Trips. Let me get the slide up here so I can remind myself what happens. The ball comes down the wing uh, and I think there's a, a suggestion that Nick Pope is going to come out, even if it is a little bit delayed. Trippier, I think, is seeing that he's about to come out and he sort of checks his run just for a split second, which is all it needs at this level. Then he realises that probably Nick Pope isn't going to get there. He sees uh, you know, the threat from Wolves, so he decides to take it into his own hands, which you want from your captain. But <laughs> Newcastle's luck sometimes doesn't just 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 goes crazy sometimes. So as as he's about to clear it, and he probably would have cleared it quite easily, he completely loses his footing. But not only that, still manages to make touch with the ball. But that touch is so shit that it actually just squares it straight to the aforementioned Wang He Chan, who probably will never have an easier goal in his life because Pope's on his ass. There's no defenders anywhere near him. Trips is on his ass, of course. And all he's got to do is like basically pass it in the back of the net. Um, I'm just going to ask for your thoughts on this one, Jack, because I, I honestly haven't got a clue where to start on it. Was it just one of those things? Um, he shouldn't have really been allowed to run into the box like he was. Uh, and then Trippier just fell over. I, I think it was going to go through to Pope. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe he gave a shout, maybe he didn't. Trippier would have cleared it if he hadn't just fallen over which was a shame for him because he played so well. 
Huang is an absolute donkey, by the way, if you look at Wolves, what Wolves fans say about him. But he scored three goals against us now in his Wolves career. Yeah. He scored the two goals in the game. I think it was that Good game morning, last season. Yeah. Where, yeah, where Hendrick scored for us the last game of the Mike Ashley era. Um, but it was but, a real... It was just... Sorry, Jack. Wasn't that his clearance in the other game where he set it up for ASM? Yeah, it was, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. the Wolves <laughs> the, the, the Wolf fans to say he's a donkey, you know. He's not, not very good at all. But it was just a calamity for us at that point in the game as well, where they weren't really creating chances, even though they had a lot of the ball and we were so desperate for the three points. Um, if if we hadn't gone on a score, a winner, I would have been so depressed about this because it was just such a bad goal to concede. Uh, it wasn't like they'd done well really to, to do it. They just sort of bulldozed into the box and it was just bad, bad defending. Kind of like the def- kind of defending we haven't been doing all this season until the last month or so. So hopefully we can tighten this up as well because we're, we're having to score two goals now to win games because we're we're not mm. we're not keeping clean sheets in the way we were before. Yeah, and Bobby, your thoughts too, mate. Um, could we have cut this out before it even got to this point? Um, should there have been a call one way or another to say your trips, it's yours, or Poppy, it's yours? Um, how did you see it? Calamity. Like, there's so many times we should have, that shouldn't have been a dangerous situation at all, but... I just had my head in my hands like when it went in because I couldn't. It was a bit of disbelief. It was a bit of what the hell is going on, and a bit of that's just our luck that Trippier, who's usually pretty steady, just slips on his ass for no reason <laughs> and edges it straight for a great assist to a donkey who scores. So, yeah. um, and even there, you see the two defenders. I think Botman's tried to go in towards the goal area there, but Burns just flat footed. Um, you know, lots of situations. I think they'll analyse it in house pretty thoroughly. But yeah, that should have been cleared pretty easily. And who knows? Pope might have been calling, and Trippier might have said, "No, you're not getting there." Or Pope might have not called, which again then it falls on Pope to to get his voice louder. But um, yeah, that's just a calamitous skull. And I thought, yeah, that's it. Here we Done. go. Done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 70 minutes. Here goes the uh, uh, circus that is Newcastle sometimes. Uh, Trippier did afterwards claim that as an assist, by the way. So check your fancy, <laughs> check your fancy football teams. You might have got an extra point for that. I'm not sure. Yes, um, so troops. <laughs> so, uh, get in. And please take um, a laugh about And please take a laugh about it afterwards because, oh my God, nobody was laughing well, at the time. Yeah, he he was in the same breath. He was he was thanking uh, yeah. Miggy for bailing them out, you know. <laughs> um few minutes later, so it's all action, really. A few minutes later, Jimenez uh, goes in on Shaw. Now, I think you might have alluded to this earlier, Jack, um, and I'll come to you first on this one for your opinion. Um, it's mm. lofted in to the box. Shaw is, I don't know why Shaw's up there, but he's, he's waiting for the ball to drop. And uh, I think he's inside the box, and Jimenez is, I want to say making contact, but I'm not going to say whether he was shoving or not. I want to hear what you have to say about it. Um, I will make my opinion about this afterwards. But Jack, how did you see that? Do you think that was a penalty? Was it stronger call than the previous handball that we mentioned? I think it was just a bit more of a desperation call because they just scored. Um, but it was it was a push in the back. I think he had a hand on his back. Again, it was a very quick VAR check. Um, I think a bit like the handball, it was kind of a half shout. It would have been mm. it would have been a bit lucky, I think, to get this. So it was more just desperation at that particular point in the game where we we needed to score and it was it was getting a bit a bit worrying about what just happened so could have been given but if it's not given on the pitch you're not gonna you're probably not gonna get that on a on a a change decision yeah i I will say that um uh, bobby uh, that we have had penalties against us when there's been what looks like absolute minimal contact from someone's arm on someone's back or shoulder and it went down like a sack of crap um I think in this instance, my opinion is that Shaw was already kind of, he was almost falling forward. I don't know if he was expecting the ball to come so low that he had to try and head it into the net, which doesn't seem very likely. But to me, it looked a bit like he was just going over too easy. And I don't think that was a penalty. But what did you think of that one? It happens every week where Shaw gets knocked in the box and never, we think it's a penalty or it's close <laughs> to being a penalty. I, I can't remember a game where Shaw's playing that that doesn't happen. Um, I didn't think it was a penalty. I just thought it was soft and. If we copped one of those, I'd be pretty upset. So move on. And like Jack said, I reckon it was desperation a bit because the game looked like it was gone again mm-hmm. at that time, if you remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it looked like it was going to be a draw and we, we desperately needed the, the full points for that. So, yeah, I think it was just desperation. 
Yeah, he does tend to dive a little bit there, does all Shaw. Um, yeah. But it was nice to see him playing again. I thought he was actually, he did pretty well this game. Um, following his nice concussion difference. protocol last week. He does, he's, he's very good. Um, well, look, we, we, we didn't get a penalty for that one. But it's only a few minutes later that we actually get the 2-1 lead. Uh, and this is the first time Newcastle scored two goals since the start of the year. I think it was. I, I think I heard that start. Um, it's lovely in the play with Willock. And, and I think at this point, you have to say Willock's had a really, really good game. Um, he feeds Miggy down our right, who has kind of got behind the defence. He's found a bit of space, which I believe was left by Kilman, who was a little bit too far up the pitch. And Miggy kind of cuts it onto his left foot and does that. I think it must be his favourite shot by now where he tries to go to the far top corner. He's scored a number of those this season and they're absolutely sensational when they go in. They look ridiculous when he misses, like, but, the, it's, you know, it, that's, I'm pretty sure that was the, the shot he was going for. Um, Bobby, <laughs> there, was a, there was a slight deflection, wasn't there? Uh, but yeah. this was still, nonetheless, a really nice move put together by Newcastle. Right after, you know, we've conceded about eight minutes earlier. Um, we desperately want to win this game. It's nice to see that we haven't just gone in our, sh in our shells here. We've we've actually took the initiative and we're, we're trying to get the next goal. Um, good play by Miggy. Hasn't been on very long himself. He's got the energy. And yeah, um, does that go down as an own goal? Or does, does Miggy get that one? No, I think Miggy gets it because it was on target, wasn't it? I think that's the ruling. It, it was generally going somewhere near the target, so they can't rule it out to be a huge deflection. So I think he gets the goal. But yeah, as you said, like his energy he brought on in that moment, the the run, the com combination with Willick and the space opened up for him. And I think he's scored 11 goals this season, which is amazing. I think eight of them have come from that type of shot. So um, this one was a bit fortunate, but we'll take it. We need, we need a bit of luck. And just on that, Every club has fucking luck. You know, you look at Man City, you know, in their game, winning 1-0 with a bit of luck. And, you know, I think we deserved our luck because we haven't had any this year. So, um, yeah, fair's fair. But uh, it was good interplay and by Willock, who was outstanding on the day. Yeah. Every team gets an equal amount of luck, but some teams get a little more <laughs> equal luck than others. Um, Jack, um this is on 84, sorry, this is on 78, 80 minutes. Uh, it's a good time to get the lead, isn't it? Uh, how did you see this goal? I, I reckon actually there's a, there's an angle of this shot where uh, on in real time it looked like a really good goal in the top corner. And it was mm -hmm. a good goal. It was well worked. But the, there is an angle where he, he shanks it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably hitting the corner flag or going out for a throw in. And the defender gets a really big deflection. It's really close to the defender, so you can't really see... Properly well, that in, bottom in most shot, of that, the angles. Yeah, that, that shows it there. there. If you have a look at it, yeah, it's probably in the corner flag. So yeah. I, I, it's it's going to be a Miggy goal, which is good. I think he deserves it for the good play, but it really wasn't wasn't a good finish. <laughs> but it didn't matter. Like I'm I'm pleased that Miggy can still score this goal as well because there's been a lot of mm. talk about how we've been found out and the little um, dart in and one two he does doesn't work anymore. But um, it's usually with Bruno who does it, but he did it with Willock, mm. who, as Bobby said, was absolutely brilliant in this game. Um, so th the most pleasing thing was just to score this goal at this point in the game because I I just thought it's going to be one one again. I'd kind of it's good job I'm not playing for Newcastle for lots of reasons, but also because I would have just given up. I'd have been like, oh, it's not fair. We're not going <laughs> to we're not going to score a goal here. So yeah. to have the character and to have the kind of the, the belief when there's a lot of pressure on, there was a lot of pressure on this game um, and there was a lot of pressure to score goals. So to be able to do that was such a really important thing. And I think this is probably one of the most important goals of the season we'll score because this was a real kind of um, fork in the road game, I think, where we, we had to, to get the win. And there you can see Miggy who um, he's <laughs> ch ch channeling his inner Maradona there with the celebration. His, uh, his yeah. eyes, are, eyes are almost popping out of his head. <laughs> They're on stalks on it. He absolutely loved that one. He's also, you know, he's patting the badge and everything afterwards. He, he really felt that one. But what do you think? Maybe he was a little bit fired up because he didn't start this one. Do you think maybe he's, um, that's why he celebrated so hard or was it just purely because he scored for the team? No, I think it's because he scored the winner. I reckon he's had a, an unreal season, really, when you look at it in the context. He's had a few down weeks, but I think he was just happy to score another winner. Like, He's done it a few times this season. So, 
he's a very excitable lad. You know, obviously loves the club. He's got big, big eyes. As I've discovered that. But yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it was just through the excitement, mate, of being in the whatever minute it was late in the game, scoring the winner. I think Miggy's yeah. a team player. If he comes off the bench or he starts, I don't think it affects him too much. Yeah, he was also excited because friend of the pod, Roberto Rojas, was there as well. Paraguay, right. guy, he was there. So, but yeah, Miggy's. Miggy's goal scoring is just ridiculous. No one would have thought he would do this this season. Like, there's stats. He's got more goals than Salah, and there's always other stats about players who he's got more goals than Foden. Um, and Mitrovic, Saka. he's got the same as Mitrovic. He's got more than Saka. So, like, he's had an absolute it's blinder incredible. of the season. Yeah. Yeah. I said in the close season that we should get, <laughs> we should get rid of him before the start <laughs> of the season. Alone. It stick a, and keep a hold of ASM until January to see how he gets on. But Christ, I got that one completely wrong. Uh, and it was, I, I think it was really nice to see Willock having played that much time, still have the mental awareness uh, and the right kind of strength in his legs to make that, to see that run first of all, and then to actually make the pass. It was absolutely perfect. That's the Joel Willock that, by the way, I thought, or <laughs> I had a brain fart in the last uh, episode. And I, I completely forgot that he was starting a lot of games uh, before the <laughs> before he got his injury. Um, yeah, so he, he he had an excellent game. Well, like I thought. Um, yeah. yeah, so look, we're almost at the end of the game now. So 84 minutes, really. Murphy goes off um, for Matt Ritchie, who seems to be getting a bit of a runner out these days. Um, it was nice to see Murphy getting a big round of applause from, from the crowd. We can talk about him a little bit afterwards if you want to name him as your man in the match, perhaps. But I don't want to go into too much. But he had a... He had a, a really decent game by his own standards, and um, it was nice to see the, the home fans appreciate. And that was mostly it. So, you know, we get to the end of five minutes of extra time. Big applause uh, and cheer from the crowd. Mighty Mags finally remember how to not only score, but also to how to win, uh, which is nice. Um, I will say, though, that that was almost an absolutely sensational third goal. Oh, I was, I was creaming. Um, it's kind of just before the final whistle in a minute, it's like two minutes beforehand or something. And this yeah. is actually where I woke up in the middle of the night and I tuned in just to see what was happening. It was literally as the free kick, uh, sorry, as the corner has been taken. Um, and it's a combination of Wilson, Bruno and Miggy. Uh, and it, it's lovely triangles. It's a lovely back heel from Bruno. Um, like he's looking away, back heel thing. Absolutely beautiful. And it eventually finds its way to Botman, who absolutely balls it up. He just blamos it. I mean, he's not a striker, fair enough, but he blamos it. Um, I actually thought it was high, but it was actually more wide. Uh, yeah. Probably smashed a cup of tea out of someone's hand and scalded the knees or something. But it was it was travelling at a pace. But that would have been, in my mind, one of Newcastle's goals of the season. The whole move and the finish, if it was there, would have been absolutely brilliant. Bruno was like... He was already peeling away, celebrating with his arms out there. The angel of the north, he's like, "Yeah!" And he turns around, he's like, "Oh, bollocks, he missed." <laughs> um, but it, it would have been. Uh, I was, I was out in my seat there. It was absolutely brilliant. What a Shame play. it didn't have the end of that needed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, we get our first win in six, and there's a nice shot of Amanda dancing in the crowd, <laughs> up in the posh seats, giving the old, doing it, ew, giving the old dad dance. Uh, nice <laughs> to see the owners. Nice to see the owners invested so much, isn't it? Um, Mm. I mean, it's their money as well. Like, um, it's a massive, massive victory for Newcastle. Ends that god awful run of form by our standards this season, at least. Um, but we had to dig really deep to get it. So let's have a look at some of the stats. Uh, surprisingly, it ends up with 58% possession to Wolves. I say surprisingly, but they did have a lot of the play in the second half. Um, Newcastle had 19 shots to Wolves' as seven. Uh, eight of those were on target. Wolves had four on target. Uh, we had 10 corners to their three and about even 10, 11 fouls each. Um, I think, how do you sum that one up, Jack? How do you sum up those stats in the context of this game, just quickly? Uh, I think it was kind of a game of two halves, but in both halves, though, we were still having shots. So even when even when Wolves, we were the, you know, Wolves were the better team and they, they did have more possession. And like I said, I think because Bruno is really our only midfielder who can retain it really well. But the shots bear out the first half, especially, which was when we were really good. Um, and I'm an XG wanker, so the XG was about two and a half for us, and it was one for Wolves, which I think was was about right on the bounds of play. Um, so the stats, I mean, you never really want to see an away team come and get more possession, but it's mm -hmm. interesting because we had quite a lot of possession against Man City, and we didn't score, even though we should have scored. So you don't necessarily need possession to have good chances when you've got good counter-attacking players like we've got. 
So I think on the balance of play, we definitely deserved there's 10 corners there as well. We definitely deserved to win. And I'm just so, so relieved we did because it was a it was a massive, massive win in the, the context mm. of the season. It really, really was. I'll ask for your opinion in just a second, uh, Bobby, but I also want to say that Trips afterwards in his interview said that uh, he does want Champions League football, um, which I absolutely loved hearing. You know, it's it's one of those things where they just dance around because you don't want to sound arrogant or you don't want to hex the team or, you know, you don't look like a dick when you end up 10th or something, you know, when you're <laughs> up there in the positions. But um, And I'm not even sure if he was just talking about himself, um, Bobby, but he's such a leader that, you know, it, when he talks like that, I kind of feel like he's just going to drag everyone else up to his standards. He's already doing it on the pitch. And I feel like, you know, if that's his mentality, that he's going to bring the rest of the team with him. Um, do you agree with that? But also, like, what do you make of those stats and, and your general opinion of the of the game? I think as good as Trips has been on the pitch, I think his influence off the pitch has been the greatest for us. He's been a transform transformable signing. Um, <laughs> Transformer? Yeah, transformer. <laughs> yeah. He's transformed the club. Like, I think that signing was the you know the signal of it the change and he's just turned the culture around and he's a winner so i've got no surprise that he wants champions league and all that and whether we're ready or not he doesn't give a shit he wants to get there and he wants to experience champions league with these fans and the club and i think the club internally know exactly what's coming and what's in store for us with the the ownership so no all power to him we we i think my lucky stars that he signed for us to be honest um yeah. in terms of the stats I'm surprised I'm not an XG wanker. I'm surprised that the <laughs> XG was so low, to be honest, 2.5, when I thought it would have been a roughly high threes because it seemed um, we dominated inside our box a lot more. But, um, yeah, we deserve to win if you take away that penalty for, for Wolves. Uh, we were definitely the better team um, for the majority of the game, except for patches in the second half. But I thought, yeah, deserve to win and... Thankfully, for the first time in a long time, we did. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to get that winning feeling back, isn't it? I'm going to ask for your... Uh, well, sorry, I'm going to look at the tables soon. Tables? There's only one. I'm going to look at the table soon. <laughs> uh, but first, let's do your man of the matches. I'll start with you, Jack. There's probably a number you can pick from here, but uh, who did you go for? Yeah, I thought Murphy had a really good game. Um, Isak in his first half was brilliant. Um, but Willick overall in the game was, it was... I think it was his best game for us. Like you, you go through the game and you're not talking about him a lot, um, mm. like in terms of the key moments. Although he did get the assist, obviously, but he's so good technically at driving forward with the ball, um, and he get he gets us up the pitch. He's really good in tight areas, so he's he's a decent passer, but he's technically excellent player. Um, I'm not surprised he was linked with Liverpool not too long ago, and um, there was talk that. Klopp saw him as a bit like a Wijnaldum. He is that kind of player. He, he can mm. get up and down the pitch. He's really quick, deceptively quick. Um, and he's got composure in key moments as well. So sometimes he has games where you, you don't notice him or he, he gives the ball away a bit and that's what you notice. But he can finish as well. I just think he's turning into an absolutely top top class player for us. He's a real asset to the team and he's only 23 as well. So if you can get Willock and Isak and Botman and Bruno growing together as a, as a as a spine of a team, you're not doing too badly there. There's going to be a selection dilemma for Eddie when Joe Linton's back for the Man United game because, um, you know, Longstaff's played almost every game, but you're not going to drop Bruno. You're not going to drop Willock on this form. So maybe maybe um, Joe will have to come back in on the left wing or something because Willock was outstanding. His best game for us by a mile and it's so good to see him play play that well. Just um, just very quickly, Jack, is there a suggestion that Willock played this well in this particular game because Joe Linton wasn't playing, do you think? Well, he was playing in, on that left-hand side of the midfield three, so that's where Joe Linton has been playing when he's been in midfield, so possibly. But then there's been games where him and Joe Linton have linked up really well on the left-hand side when Joe Linton's been on that kind of left attacking wing position and they've interchanged a lot. So maybe he had a bit of space that he that he might not have had if Joe was playing. Um, but you know, you're not going to complain at having two midfielders of that quality who you can who you can call on, and he's going to be needed yeah. at different times. He's a good sub to bring off the bench sometimes as well because he's got the energy and he's got mm -hmm. the legs. I think if you can add if you can add maybe six to eight to ten goals a season, he'll be a, such a good player, and he can't be far off the England squad as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, no international talk, please. I'm 
sick of that. No, we don't want anybody going off internationals and pulling the bloody calves <laughs> the moment they get there. Uh, Bobby, given that Willock just had an absolute sensational game in the absence of Big Joe, and given how much you love Big Joe, are you going to give the man of the match to Big Joe? Yeah, it was because of Big Joe that Willock played well. So, well done. <laughs> um, no, like, I, Jack still stole my thunder. I was going to say England could use a, a player like Joe Willock in that midfield because he's just a sensation. Like, I think we are seeing now a, an all-round player that how's mouldy. Like, I think Willock always had talent, um, especially in the front third, but I think he's become an, an all-round midfielder now under how His defensive work is amazing. He carries the ball. Like, he's just a mate. Like, you think he's going to lose the, lose possession, but he just doesn't, and he just gets it up the pitch. And, yeah, his passing and his movement and his ability to find space in the box and for a midfielder is unique. I think we're starting to see a very top-line midfielder here, which is exciting for us, you know. Um, so, yeah, definitely he was man of the match for me. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, give it to Big Joe for getting a red card and allowing this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> for being a dafty. Um, yeah, Willock, um, it's nice to see him finish a game as well. And also he was given the old badge a bit of a point in the pat. So he's he's fully invested in the project as well, isn't he? He, he must be loving the fact he's getting all this uh, game time. I will say that on occasion, his mind's probably one or two steps ahead of his foot. And sometimes he'll kind of lose the ball a little bit. But, you know, you can say that about just about everybody. Uh, for me, I'm going to say everyone because it was a it was a brilliant team performance. Um, I'm also going to say for that ball boy. Huh? Boy. Except for Pope. <laughs> Except for Paul. No, 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 no. Give, give Paul his due. I'll come to him in a second. But no, the ball boy, yeah, it's sensational touch. One for the future. See him next season. Um, I'm actually going to go for Isaac because um, it could have easily been one of those games where he's brought in and he doesn't do the business and then he's kind of not played the game afterwards, perhaps. And, you know, you think, oh, that's what's that going to do for his confidence? But as much as he scored that goal, his all-around play was... Really good the way he runs the channels. He's got a nice touch on him. He's he's quite tricky when he wants to be as well. And um, when he gets up to full speed, full fitness, um, I think he will be just unstoppable. He's already he's already amazing as it is. But you know, he, just imagine um, him at hundred percent. He cool. reminded me um, of the way Thierry Henry used to play against us, where he would run the channels. He would just have that pace. He would just be always a threat. Jesus, he's exciting, Isaac. He's going to be something, isn't he? He's going to. He just like I remember watching Arsenal when they were great, you know, the Invincibles and all that. And Thierry Henry was running at us, and it was just like that. It was like, how do you stop this bloke, you know? And, um, yeah, imagine, he was imagine having the, imagine having the next Thierry Henry at the club, he'd probably, he'd probably end up breaking Shearer's record, wouldn't he? Um, <laughs> yeah, but he, he, he was brilliant. Um, I actually do want to give a prop to Nick Pope because he made some absolutely uh, crucial saves at important times. Yeah, all right. You know, he might have given away a penalty. <laughs> um, but again, Eddie Howe said it wasn't. So, you know, yeah, suck on that one. Um, trips, because I think he found his range again. There's been a lot of games lately where he's overhitting, underhitting, first man from a set piece, doing the absolute nothing. Um, but he was he was brilliant. And, you know, that, that, that set piece for the goal was just unbelievable. Um, and I finally want to give a tip of the hat to Eddie Howe, actually, because um, he did make the brave changes. You know, he brought in the Murphy, he brought in Isaac. Um, and I think he could have easily just stuck with his favourites, as he has been doing a lot this season. Um, you know, it's easy to stick with what you know. But I think he kind of, I don't I'm not going to see, listen to the fans or anything, God almighty. But um, imagine listening to some of our fans. Yeesh. But I do, I do <laughs> think that he... He was on the same page as a lot of us, you know, and I think he was. I think it was. It does take a certain amount of bravery, especially, you know, if you're not sure how it's going to go. And it, and it paid off beautifully. Look, I mean, Isaac scores straight away, uh, and Miggy comes on as a second half sub. He scores. Um, all right, slight defection, um, but I think um, I think that was brave of Eddie, and he made the changes uh, that the, the subs at a fairly earliest time it was around about sixty ish, sixty five minutes. Uh, rather than waiting too much longer. So I want to give him a tip of the hat as well. He'll be over the moon with that. Um, well done, Eddie Howe, from me. All right, just to wrap things up, let's have a look at the top 10, because we don't care about the rest, because we are so far ahead. Uh, it's Arsenal in 66 at top. It's Man City in second on 61. Uh, both have played 27. You've got Man United in third on 50, having played 26. You've got Spurs in fourth on 48 points, having played 27. You've got the mighty bloody Mags in fifth again um, on 44 points, having played 25 games. 
Uh, Usurping Liverpool, who've dropped down into sixth uh, on 42 points, haven't played one game more than Newcastle. Um, Jack, we have two games in hand over fourth place Spurs. Um, it's if we if we can win the next bunch of games, it's going to look bloody good for us. Yeah, and we've got Spurs at home in April as well. So I was just looking at that at, um, goals um, tally there. We've we've conceded seven less than anyone else still, even though we've been mm. conceding lately. So that's really been the the backbone of the season and what it's been built on. But yeah, the mm. the table's definitely looking better now than what it was. Um, we've got the games in hand, which is against West Ham and Brighton at home. Uh, they're the games on hand over Tottenham. But if we win the next two games, we're going to be equal with Man United because with the same games played because they don't play this coming weekend because they're in the FA Cup. Mm. So from from kind of looking over shoulders at Fulham and, and Brighton and Brentford a little bit recently, it's nice to be able to see that green arrow and look up the table again. It's going to be a big ask still, though. Liverpool can put a run together. Chelsea have started winning a few games and they're only, what, seven points behind us. That's a big ask for them to overhaul us, but it's not impossible. Spurs have somehow won 15 games despite being absolutely shit all season. Shit. I don't know how that's happened. <laughs> so okay. so it's it's a really um interesting run in to the end of the season. Well yeah. it'd be good if we can if we can beat Forest, that'll just set us up so nicely for the international break and um, for the last 12 games after that. But it's it's yeah. so good to see that arrow. It's good to see us where we are in the league. You know, we're there, we're there on merits, and it's going to be a really exciting end to the season. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're having slight network problems there. But Bobby, uh, your thoughts on that? And one of the teams that Jack didn't highlight there is Brighton. They're on thirty nine points, and they've only played twenty four games. And you know they're having a pretty decent season as well. So, um, first of all. How good is it to see us in fifth, reclaiming our rightful position in the top five and soon to be a top four? I'm absolutely certain of that. And um, yeah, where do you see our major threats? Um, I don't really. Liverpool haven't really done anything for me. I know they beat Manchester United 7 0, but that looks like <laughs> a, a weird result for me. I don't know how that happened. But weird, right? look at the goal yeah. difference there. Like we're 19 and Man United are six. We win our two games. We go above them with a steadier goal difference. So, um, I think we're a, we're the only threat to us not making top four now. If we can keep it together, we should be, you know, too good. Because I don't. I've watched Tottenham like Jack. Don't rate them. They've conceded thirty seven goals um, this season. That's incredible. That's it's double Crazy. what we have. So I think um, it's all in our hands now. If we can do it with our small squad, I've got my doubts. It might be uh, a bit early, but um, let's hope we can do it and make top four. Why not? No, absolutely. I mean, but keep your eye on Brighton. Um, they're playing pretty decent and they could even go up to fourth themselves if everything else stays the same, uh, which it won't. But, you know, that's just where they are. Um, one of those dark horses. All right. Well, that will do it for us. Mm -hmm. Cheers, lads. We've managed to waffle on for an hour and 10 minutes. Um because who doesn't like talking about a victory for the Newcastle United? Um, our next fixture, as I think I've mentioned earlier, is Forest this Friday in the UK, or a nice Saturday morning kickoff. I think it's going to be around about six o'clock for you and I, Jack, and yeah. even better for Bobby. Seven o'clock in the morning Saturday for you, mate. Get the beers out. Yay. That's beer or clock, isn't it? So nice. Sleeping. <laughs> Well, well, I'll be picking up the in-laws from the airport, mate. So, you know, I think you win on that one. Um, all right. That'll do for us. We will have a preview of that Forest game. When's that coming out, Jack? Uh, I think it'll be Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday or Thursday. Watch your inbox for that one when it drops. Uh, but that'll do for us now. If you have enjoyed what you've seen or heard, please give us a like. And we will leave it there. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Bobby. Away the mighty tune. Thank you very much. See ya.